Welcome to our 37 of the OER Camp Global. My name is Shahir Mira, and I'm very happy to host this session, which has a very uh, special and um, super important meaning uh, to me personally. Before I hand over to our speakers today, three of them, I'd like to invite everyone who is present here to ask questions in the chat. We'll make sure that once the talk is through, uh, take as many possible as many questions possible, and then if you um, feel free, if you'd like to to unmute your mic and ask yourself uh, the questions. Um, open for anti-racism, using open education to support anti-racist teaching is the talk that this wonderful team is going to deliver. So without a further ado, um, please help me welcome James, Joy, and Una, who are going to talk to us about this uh, initiative. James, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Jahir. I really appreciate the uh, introduction. And uh, congratulations to the OER Camp team for this incredible event, 48 hours of OER. You know, what could be better for the world and what could be more fun for us? So congratulations to everybody uh, who's organizing this. We're thrilled to be here. Uh, I'm going to share my screen now. Whoops, and uh, I think I'm gonna start sharing my screen now if I can and uh, share some slides. And we will walk through these slides. Uh, and uh, share, share our program and our, our, our project with you. We uh, look forward to questions in the chat and time at the end for discussion. Uh, so our, the title of our talk is Open for Anti-Racism, Using Open Education to Support Anti-Racist Teaching. And first we will introduce our project team. Una, you wanna say hello? Hello, uh, this is Una Daly. I'm the director of the Community College Consortium for OER at Open Education Global. And I'm uh, thrilled to lead this project with James and with all these fantastic people on the team. And you're going to hear from another one right now. Thank you, Una. Yes, my name is James Galapa Grossclag. Uh, my day job is as a dean at College of the Canyons in sunny Southern California. Uh, we're one of the 115 California Community Colleges. Uh, another project uh, team member who is not here is Liz Yada, who is manager of communities of practice with Open Educational Glo Open Education Global. And another teammate who is not here is Kim Gruy, who is an instructional designer with Northern Virginia Community College. And finally, our team member who is here, uh, Joy. Yes. Hi. It's wonderful to be here with all of you. My name is Joy Shumate. I have the pleasure of uh, my day today working with James at College of the Canyons, where I am a director of online education. But I'm really excited to be here um, and share with, with Una and James a, a bit about, um, about our program, Open for Anti-Racism. Thank you, Joy. So a quick word about the particular context in which we work and in which our program is taking place. Still, we think that the program and the ideas are applicable to many other, other contexts, but our context is community colleges in the United States. Uh, if you're not familiar, our institutions are open access institutions. Uh, we proudly accept the top 100% of applicants. We focus on teaching and we focus on meeting the needs of our local communities. Our students uh, complete the first two years of university. Uh, many of them transfer to a, a university for a baccalaureate degree. Uh, many of our students engage in workforce development, preparing for uh, technical practical careers, uh, as well as preparing for uh, college and transfer to university. Uh, overall in the United States, uh, almost half of all United States students are in a community college. Uh, you see the average age of our students is a bit older than maybe the stereotypes tell us. Uh, most of our institutions are majority minority institutions, which means most of our students, most of our institutions serve populations that are not uh, predominantly white students. And you'll see the last bullet there most of our students work uh, while attending uh, community college. 
So again, that's just, that's the context in which we're doing the work. Um, what we hope you'll learn today is about the program design and the support of the Open for Anti-Racism program. Uh, you, we sincerely know that you will learn how OER and open pedagogy can be tools to promote anti-racist pedagogy. Uh, we'll share some examples of uh, projects from past participants. We'll share some research results from our first year of implementation. We're now in our second year. And we'll talk about what's happening uh, in our second year and in the future. Uh, and overall, we in this program, we are testing the following propositions. We believe that faculty or academics, instructors, want to make their teaching anti-racist and they need tools, uh, information, and a safe place to explore ideas, particularly around anti-racism. And we're testing the proposition, the idea that OER and open pedagogy are very good tools to make your teaching anti-racist. Uh, the origins of this for project for us come from the spring and summer of 2020, not necessarily with the outset of the pandemic, but in the United States, uh, the murder of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and many other African-American and black uh, people in the United States. Um, and what we all saw in around the United States, but also around the world, really Black Lives Matter, uh, demonstrations uh, in other countries, uh, we saw a lot of great statements like you see on the screen going up on university websites and letters being issued to the public saying, we care, we're going to be anti-racist, uh, we hate discrimination. And then there wasn't a lot of action. So, uh, uh, so, so we took it upon ourselves to say, how, you know, we're deeply involved in open education. What, how can open education do something to help our faculty, our academics uh, do something practical now in the classroom uh, to meet the needs of the time? Uh, one, what, what, sorry about that. One of our faculty participants spoke, spoke to this directly uh, in a survey. Uh, uh, they said, I was excited to see the word anti-racism in the program title. Most often, often you see the word equity, uh, and it has come to be meaningless to me uh, in the discussions in the United States around diversity, equity, inclusion. We hear those words a lot and not a lot of action always. Uh, so we believe again that OER and open pedagogy are tools. We, we hope that at this conference, we're all familiar with, with the idea of OER, uh, but if you're not familiar with open pedagogy, it really is a, is a practical tool set of using of you as an instructor, using renewable assignments that your students uh, are creating that are shared in the genuine world. Uh, it's learner-centered, uh, co-creating content and materials with your students, uh, connecting students to the world outside the classroom. And of course, using the five hours, making sure that the content you're producing is openly licensed so that it can be reused. Um, we know uh, from, Emerging research, and, and we're just sharing sharing a, a clip from one of our uh, in one of the article research articles that inspired us. Uh, that uh, not all OER is necessarily diverse; doesn't necessarily represent diverse perspectives in the world. Uh, this is a research article by Shauna Brandle, a college at Kingsborough Community College in the United States. Marginalized groups in the population, and she found that you know, that, that the, uh, the representation was poor and that OER textbooks were no better than commercial textbooks in representing traditionally marginalized groups. Um, and I hope that we, that many of us are realizing that when we uh, create open textbooks, sometimes we recreate the patriarchy and the white supremacy or the Eurocentric focus in commercial textbooks and make it free, but we're not really implementing other changes. So, uh, our program, Open for Anti-Racism, uh, helps our participants who are, again, academics, faculty, helps them to explore how to use OER and open pedagogy. Uh, they learn about anti-racist pedagogy, OER and open pedagogy in an online course. We'll, Joy will talk more about that in a second. Our participants develop and implement an action plan to do something right now or very quickly uh, in their classes. Uh, they benefit from peer connections, support groups, 
Uh, and we do a lot of research and document the research. Uh, and Una will tell us about the really exciting uh, results of our first year of research. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Joy. Thank you, James. So um, what I'm going to do is kind of explain a bit about uh, the six week course that our faculty participants went through. Um, Dr. Kim Gruy, who is not here with us, but she was part of the team on one of those uh, first slides. She and I uh, co-developed the course and co-facilitated the course. It was an asynchronous course and um, we provided opportunities though to be available for participants synchronously uh, if they have questions or just to check in to ensure that our faculty participants were feeling comfortable as they were moving through the content. This year in particular, this is as James mentioned, our um, sort of second cohort, if you will, running this program. We've expanded the course to be six weeks now. So our participants move through a six week asynchronous course. Still, we have the synchronous option available um, to, to meet with us, to, to ask questions. But really the intent of this asynchronous course was first and foremost to build community. Um, we knew that having conversations about race and racism are not always easy. So we, have first, we first had to really work to, to build a sense of, of community and comfort amongst the participants to engage in these conversations. Then we moved, and you'll see on the screen here, sort of the topics that we explored together through the course. First, exploring and having to define what is anti-racism. We had to make sure we had a shared understanding of what that even meant. And then we moved on to exploring what is OER, what is open pedagogy. And it's important to note that our participants uh, came to this program with varying levels of comfort or even knowledge of what OER is. Uh, and same with open pedagogy. For most, that was a new concept uh, for them. Other participants were more familiar with OER and for others, they had heard of it but had never uh, adopted or utilized OER themselves. And then last, what's really important um, was the creation of an action plan. As, as James mentioned, the purpose of this entire program was us wanting to do something and, and have impact. And I think in a lot of ways, uh, we can go to trainings and engage in professional development and attend webinars, uh, but sometimes it can be difficult to translate those things into action. And so really the goal of this asynchronous course was for our participants to, after moving through the learning, dedicate themselves to making some actionable change in their course uh, in the immediate semester of following the course. So if we can move on to the next slide. Thank you, James. So first, we wanted to define, you know, what is anti-racist pedagogy? Uh, certainly not all of our participants had a shared understanding. And so we wanted to be able to kind of set those ground rules. Really what the whole concept of anti-racism is, is to be explicitly race conscious. Um, typically, at least in the United States, we tend to avoid having conversations about race because they can be uncomfortable. Uh, but in this case, we're, we're wanting to to explicitly have those conversations and engage. Um, so that means being conscious uh, about race, acknowledging our own sense of identity, um, honoring and acknowledging the identities of, in this case, students in the classroom. Uh, we wanted to be thinking uh, systemically and structurally, what systems are currently in place that one might have led us to where we are, but also thinking about our own disciplines, what systems and structures have shaped the disciplines uh, that, that we teach and, and that we engage, and in what ways can we maybe highlight um, race or the voices of those who've contributed to the field that maybe are not uh, acknowledged frequently. And uh, you know that goes to the last point of just acknowledging the history of, of our disciplines. So, Really, we wanted to kick the course off with this shared understanding so that we could really move forward with thinking about and our participants could move forward with thinking about the ways 
that they can explicitly be anti-racist uh, in their courses. Next slide, please. So we really wanted to um, make the connection and, and support our participants in making the connection between how uh, OER and open pedagogy can be leveraged uh, to make courses anti-racist. So there are many examples here on the screen. I'm not gonna read all of them to you, but some that really stand out or you know, that are important, uh, at least to me, are um, first you'll see considering the authorial voices, who are we including? Who are we acknowledging and honoring as um, voices of authority in our fields? And who's being left out? And really the, the very nature of open gives us the opportunity to advocate and to share those voices that, that typically are left out um, in either in our textbooks or in um, the curriculum that, that shapes our teaching and learning. Um, it, oh, sorry, back one, one sec, James. Thank you. One last thing, and, and I, I, actually James already mentioned this, but it's important to note that especially with open pedagogy, we really explored this idea and this concept of uh, disposable and non-disposable assignments. Um, that seems to be pretty, has been pretty impactful for our participants. And that concept is, um, you know, very often we, we will assign students uh, an assignment. They work really hard on it. They submit it to us as the instructor. We read it, grade it, and that's kind of where it dies. <laughs> that, that's where it ends. Um, so really embracing the, the idea uh, that students can contribute to activities and to projects that can live even beyond their time in the course and can be uh, resources for students in the future or just contribute to uh, the general knowledge. Next slide. Thanks, James. So this is a quote from one of our faculty participants, um, and we call the program OFAR for short. So uh, OFAR is a great opportunity to learn more about OER and connect to anti-racist pedagogy. So it seemed to just fit. So really, again, we were trying to uh, support our participants in making that connection. Um, and in this case, uh, this, this faculty member shared that it, it just fit, that open can be used and leveraged to make their courses anti-racist. Next slide. So as I mentioned before, uh, really the, the course culminated with um, our, our participants developing an action plan. And so we provided them with some loose guidance, uh, but, but a template to help support our participants in really defining uh, what they could take on, what changes they could make in their courses that, that would be actionable. What's important to note is we wanted our participants to be thinking about what changes they could make immediately. So in the immediate semester uh, following com the completion of this course, but also to think long-term. Um, many of our participants had goals that they knew they wouldn't necessarily be able to achieve in the short amount of time of one semester, you know, immediately following the course but to get them thinking about, um, you know, this process is iterative and, and the concept of being anti-racist, you don't arrive at anti-racism. We are, we are constantly working towards uh, and reflecting on, on how to be anti-racist. And, and same with this work, we wanted to, to be uh, scaffolding, if you will, and, and having our participants thinking about what they can continue to do um, beyond the short term. And, and lastly, you know, really how they can just scale up their projects and bring more folks in. So this slide here uh, is from the presentation of one of our participants, Anna Garcia Garcia. Um, she is a chemistry instructor and you can move on to the next slide, James, for her project and for her action plan. What she had her students do and uh, is to actually contribute to developing, researching scientists who um, uh, represent um, often marginal, marginalized groups and to highlight scientists, research them, and then share this information so it's openly licensed. Other students can learn from each other and learn from the projects they create. But together as a class, they collectively built resources that now are available for other students in, in future classes, but also just others worldwide. So it was really a, a good um, opportunity for students to 
actively participate in, um, in developing these resources uh, and, and explaining a little bit about why they chose uh, the, the scientists that they chose. Next slide, please. So this next slide was from um, the action plan of another participant, Deborah Crumpton. She teaches uh, business at her college. Next slide. And what she chose to do for her project is uh, specifically, she was looking at her, um, her marketing class and ways that she could explicitly talk about race and racism in her marketing course. So she engaged in uh, two assignments. The first was similar to uh, Anna's project where students would research and share about uh, racially minoritized entrepreneurs her next project was um, helping students with uncovering uh, examples of racial bias in marketing. So she provided some examples herself, and then students then participated in, uh, in activities where they too researched and then supported what they found um, in terms of how marketing can, can be biased uh, in, uh, in her business course. Next slide. So this was really interesting, um, and we wanted to share this with you. This was from Deborah. She wanted to share some of her lessons learned as she moved through, through the process of implementing her action plan. So, you know, again, the course concluded with a plan, but this, these are her lessons learned at, at, as she culminated the process of actually implementing, putting that plan into practice. So, you know, for her, she shared that, you know, the movement to anti-racism requires movement through racism. So really confronting racism head on, uh, engaging in those discussions with her students. Um, she uh, shared that, you know, she really had to, um, or the process was, was really embracing, uh, racializing, considering how all aspects of her discipline and even her course uh, have been shaped by racism. And again, it's an iterative process. As always, we need more time, more energy to, to accomplish the goals and the plans we set for ourselves. Uh, but what was really exciting here was that she was able to implement her plan and really was inspired and recognized that there was still more to do. Next slide. Right, so this is another um, project from one of our participants, Oliver Rosales. He teaches a history course, uh, specifically the history of California, state of California. And uh, next slide. What he did was has had his students. Um, oh, I'm sorry, James, back one. Thank you. Uh, he had his students engage in building an archive. So he had his students actually engage in interviewing their family, family members, and together built an archive. Uh, what was really powerful and moving about Oliver's project uh, was that the students got to see themselves, they got to participate in what it meant to be historians. And it honored and acknowledged their own family's history as being important, being historical in and of themselves. So uh, this was an example of, of um, he really embraced the concept of open pedagogy and anti-racism to build a, a, a project here and a resource that really will outlive the individual projects themselves, but become resources not only for future students, but for the community as a whole. Next slide. And then I believe this is a last project example. Um, this was by Nakia Cheney. She teaches uh, English and, and critical thinking and, at her college. And what she did was uh, built a, a module for one of her online courses, specifically looking at the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, she was especially interested, she was newer to OER. And so she was especially interested in locating and identifying resources um, that were openly licensed. She shared and created opportunities for students to share their own experiences and perspectives. So those were included as resources in this module. And then she shared this module out. So it is openly licensed. So both she and her students became active participants in um, growing and uh, contributing to additional openly licensed uh, materials. 
So you might be interested uh, in, in learning more about the course. We have openly licensed and shared the uh, a facilitated version of the course and a self-paced version. I can put those links in the chat uh, after I finish here. Um, but we, we do use the learning management system of uh, Canvas, so that's where the courses are, are shared. But certainly they're available if, if anyone would like to adopt the course, or even if you're interested in uh, learning about some of the resources that we included in the course. Next slide. Great. And then lastly, um, so James and I work at College of the Canyons, and uh, we have a team, a small but mighty team of former and current students that work to support our faculty locally on our campus with developing OER, adopting, um, and also the creation of, of textbooks. So this team was uh, made available to the participants in the Open for Anti-Racism program. Again, um, our participants had you know, different levels of um, experience with OER. So our, this team was available, College of the Canyons team was available to support our participants with everything ranging from OER search to licensing, and we're just available to answer questions uh, as our participants moved through uh, the implementation process. And then uh, lastly there, you'll see we had monthly speakers who um, came to share their expertise, um, ranging from you know, OER experts to uh, those on anti-racism. So it really uh, kind of kept the, the cohort together and um, connected, if you will, and encouraged as they were moving from the course and, and into the implementation process. Next slide. And now it's time for me to pass it on over to Una. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Um, and yeah, I just, um, thank you, Joy, for sharing those amazing projects, um, those as keep us inspired what faculty did with their students. Um, so, um, well, one thing about guaranteeing that a program continues past its, um, uh, its initial um, uh, implementation is to um, be able to provide some impact statistics. So we were lucky to work with a research group here in, in the state of California that um, is the traditional researchers for our California Community College system, the RP group. And when we first started this project, we had kind of these wide open questions um, like, can anti-racist instructional materials and teaching practices impact success and retention of different student populations? Um, and that's one we're kind of still working on. Um, but um, we did interviews, I'm sorry, we did um, do some surveys with students, which I'll give you the results from in a moment. Also, how do participating students perceive the difference in a classroom where the teacher is specifically um, transforming the course to be anti-racist with OER and open pedagogy? Can students really detect that? Um, and can anti and can open pedagogy be used for anti-racism in all disciplines? And this was an area where um, sometimes the sciences and the more quantitative uh, disciplines feel that uh, there isn't time for that or that it doesn't apply to them. Um, and we were lucky to have four STEM faculty, what we call STEM faculty. We had, we had one math faculty and uh, three science uh, professors who all embraced open pedagogy as an anti-racist tool. So that was also very encouraging. And then uh, do do, do the individual faculty, we had 17 of them last year, we have 45 this year, do they recommend open pedagogy as an anti-racist tool? So those we started with. Next slide, please. So uh, just to let you know, we, um, we worked with the faculty. There was a pre-survey before they jumped into the course uh, or developed that action plan that Joy mentioned and uh, you know, finally did the implementation. We had a post-survey with them as well at the end. And we also interviewed uh, over half the faculty to get a little bit more nuanced feedback. Um, and then students also participated in a post-survey um, so to examine um, how they were perceiving the class. Uh, next slide, please. So the results came back that over 80% of students felt more engaged in their, in their 
open for anti-racism class than they did in other classes at the college. Um, And there was a number of things, a number of reasons students said that they felt more engaged. Um, um, Several were that they felt that the Um, faculty um, made a real effort to engage students in the learning process. So it wasn't a unidirectional, you know, uh, um, the teacher up on the stage, they were really um, having a a lot of dialogue. Um, They felt that the specific content in the course was more engaging. And um, they also said that the interaction with other students was very engaging. Um, And some of the other things that we asked the students specifically about was, did you have an opportunity to provide your own perspective and experience? 87% said yes, that their own experience was taken into account in the class. Um, They also, 92% said that um, they they were examining the history of the discipline for biases. And, um, Uh, James mentioned political science earlier as uh, an area that has a lot of uh, biases. (laughs) Most of our disciplines do, but students have the opportunity to um, look at it through that lens and see that uh, other things they had studied. (laughs) Thank you, James. And finally, um, they said, uh, yep, sorry, (laughs) almost always used classroom content to identify challenges and biases. I think James is telling me to hurry up. (laughs) <laughs> so anyway, it was, we got some great feedback from the students. Uh, next slide. All right. 90% of faculty indicated that they felt their teaching improved by participating in the program. Um, and their favorite teaching practices for that were incorporating student voices, engaging students in the co-creation of anti-racist modules or um, Uh, or different activities. Um, Joy mentioned uh, Nakia, who worked on the Black Lives Matter module. She also did podcasts with the students. So another example. And um, 69% engaged in explicit conversations about race. Um, So not trying to hide it behind equity and diversity, but really talking about race and and how that affects our learning. Um, And they, um, 94% said that anti-racist teaching practices uh, improved, were improved, uh, their open educational resource knowledge improved 81%, et cetera. So a lot of, a lot of good feedback about what they learned that, that uh, this last year. Uh, next slide. And what did they plan to continue? So this is an interesting one. Um, and um, they plan to engage their students to co-create materials. So um, a vast majority plan to continue that, to incorporate their student voices in the materials and in the classroom, um, implement inclusive images. So bringing in images of um, different populations um, into the materials, um, ones that are often excluded. And 60%, so it went down a little bit, said they wanted to engage in explicit conversations about race. And what we got some feedback from uh, several of our faculty that those conversations about race were difficult to have. Um, And I know Joy mentioned one of our instructors who said that that was the most powerful thing in her classroom. Uh, But there were some faculty who got some pushback from students about that. And so that's something we're looking at in year two of how we can support faculty in those really important conversations. I think the most exciting thing was 100% of faculty said that the most effective teaching strategy was uh, uh, strategies, I would say, is open pedagogy. So getting students involved. Um, creating those renewable assignments um, where it's not just something that is done once and not and uh, has no value outside of that uh, that one activity. Um, and 86.7% would recommend the program to others. So almost all of them. And finally, we are changing this year. Um, we're moving from a pilot, the pilot of last year, to a program. And we were very excited to work with the Hewlett Foundation on this. They, they have been our, um, our thought partners and funders on this program from the very beginning. Um, and we 
looked at expanding the program because we had a lot of success last year. Um, but were we going to expand from 17 to uh, faculty at 16 colleges to, uh, you know, 50 faculty at 50 colleges? And when we thought about it, you know, the impact that could be had by working with a team at a specific institution became a, um, an obvious way to really improve that impact because a single faculty member can't often can't sway an entire campus. But if you can get a team going uh, to champion this, um, it's far more likely to be effective. We've also engaged um, the administrators at the campuses and they provided support letters um, for the applications. And they're going to be participating in some activities uh, this spring with us. So we're really excited about getting administrators involved as well. Those are the decision makers around the programs that happen at our colleges. And finally, we're going to be measuring student outcomes. So we're going to actually be looking at um, student retention, persistence, and um, essentially uh, grades in these classes where there have been interventions. So we're going to look at before before the intervention of the OFAR program and then during it, and then we're going to look at it uh, another semester later. So we're excited to um, explore this new area. Um, and uh, let's see. Yes, uh, demand remains strong. So we have eight teams um, from uh, eight different colleges, um, and most of the teams are about six people, six faculty who are participating this year, and they are just completing, as uh, Joy mentioned, they're just completing uh, their action plans this week. They've been in a review process on those, and they are going to start the coaching phase of the program, and then they'll be implementing come mid to late January when, when courses, classes start for our spring semester. So I think that's our last slide, James, right? Uh, oh. <laughs> so um, we think that these propositions um, are good ones for us to continue to look at. We felt very um, positive about the first year outcomes and how um, Open Pedagogy and OER were able to support our faculty um, to make their teaching anti-racist. So we'd like to open this up to questions. And we'd like to challenge all of you to think about how you could utilize OER and open pedagogy in your context. We understand that uh, uh, American racism has some unique features, but it's certainly not only a problem of, uh, of the United States. So how can you in your context use uh, OER to make your curriculum more diverse and more equitable?